I never thought that I'd own a 1911 until I walked into my local shop about three, four months ago, and I saw this guy sitting in the used case. Uh, it looked brand new. You know, you know how it is. Some people probably buy a gun, shoot it once, and then sell it back. I think that's what, what happened here because this looks so new, and uh, it was almost $300 off of what one of these would normally cost uh, brand new. So I, I had to pick it up. I figured, you know, every collection has to have a 1911. Let me just try it out. Uh, what's the worst that can happen? And turns out I, I love it. You know, it's become a really fun range gun for me. And let me go ahead and show you clear so we can start talking about it some. Nothing in the mag there. Nothing in the chamber. There's nothing in this mag either because we'll be swapping them in and out. So, yeah, like I said, never thought I'd own a 1911. Uh, they're heavy. You can only have eight rounds of 45 ACP in it. And uh, there's newer and cooler things out like that STI we talked about in my last video. But uh, I definitely have an appreciation for these guys now. It's been fun to shoot at the range. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a classic handgun that I, I'm really glad is in my collection now. So, jumping into this one. Uh, the Dan Weston Specialist, 45 ACP. The black model. It has their, I think it's called duty finish. I had the info pulled up here. Yeah, they call it a duty finish. And uh, basically, that that's just this black coating here that gives it increased corrosion resistance, rust resistance, wear resistance. Uh, I'm not too worried about any of that because I don't uh, ever plan on carrying this guy. But if that's uh, something you're looking for, then you might be interested in this particular model. They have a silver model that is just a standard coating, I think. I'm not sure, you'll have to go to their website to double check on that. Uh, but I definitely like the look of the black finish on this gun. It's just whew, really good looking gun. So jumping into it, here at the grip, we have these G10 panels on either side, and they are very grippy. I'm not sure if they're VZ or something else that uh, Dan Wesson uses, but they, uh, they feel good in the hand, and uh, your hand, your, your grip isn't going anywhere, especially with the checkering that you have on the front and back here. Lots of um, dots, and I forget what they call it. Uh, I'm trying to look and see on my info page there, but I don't see it, so just you can see for yourself, it, uh, it's very aggressive and grippy. Wouldn't it be fun to carry appendix, but I don't plan to do that, so it's not an issue. And uh, yeah, really comfortable uh, grip on that handgun. Down here we have the magwell, which uh, for me is coming a little bit loose. I just need to add some blue Loctite maybe and tighten that down and it won't be an issue. But uh, the magwell does make reloads a lot easier. I've started to get better with them. So. Magwell is nice. You just saw me using the mag release button. It's textured, not too raised or anything, but it's not hard to find. And the only issue I've found with the whole mag situation is that every once in a while, I'll get one of these. Uh, it's kind of just uh, stuck halfway there. Happens a lot with this 10 round Wilson Combat, but that's not a big issue for me because most of the time it does drop free. And again, it's just a range gun, so I'm not super worried about it. I'll just shake it loose or uh, pull it out. So it, does, it happens less often with the Checkmate mags that the uh, Dan Wilson came with. So that's just for your information if you're worried about that kind of thing. The grip safety at the back here, like the 2011, you know, it, it works. And that's all I can ask a grip safety to do for me because you know there's not a lot to talk about there sorry for the dog guys he's a loud mouth i can't help it uh, the safety again like that sti it's a really nice safety super positive uh, to take off safety or put on safety and you're not going to get stuck in any halfway position here you know when you're on you know when you're off and again it's ambidextrous so Really, really nice safety. Uh, 
Coming back to the hammer, another one of those things that there isn't too much to say about. It's skeletonized, and it has that silver finish on it, which is a nice contrast with the rest of the handgun. We already showed you clear, but let's do it one more time because we're going to mess with the trigger now. So, you have your take up here on a curved 1911 trigger. You hit a really defined wall, and then the break. There it is, really nice. And then the reset. There you go. Let's see it one more time. Take up, defined wall, your break, and your reset. I am not going to guess what the weight on that trigger is. Uh, it, it's light. Maybe their website has it, but you you know that's easy to find. Just go on their website if you're that curious about it. But it is a very good 1911 trigger. You just saw it doesn't take much to uh, to break it. And I got pretty good shots with it. I'll go ahead and show you some of that work I did at the range today while I'm thinking about it. Keep in mind, guys, I'm no John Wick, but I did okay, I think. Uh, did some close range work today, uh, seven yards, uh, shooting three rounds with these flush mags, and then 10 rounds with the Wilson Combat Reload. Uh, I was really trying to test these mags because I just bought this one today, and uh, I didn't have any malfunctions with it, so that was a you know, really, uh, really good purchase. 150 rounds later. Really proud of that one. Gosh, he's going crazy today. I'm sorry, guys. So anyway, I was uh, only at seven yards, but I was trying to trying to speed up um, my uh, my cadence and as fast as I could to keep it in that diamond. It wasn't super fast, but I thought it did pretty well for me. The next group I have here it was at ten yards. Uh, I had to slow it down a little bit because I started dropping rounds here but dialed it back in, uh, and uh, again, I, I don't think I did that bad, at least for me. There's always room for improvement, especially with me. So just wanted to show you guys what I'm capable of doing with this gun, so I'm sure many of you out there can do better. All right, let's move on. I think we left off with uh, the trigger. So moving on from there, let's go to the rail. 1913 rail here, and as you just saw, my Surefire that wouldn't fit on the STI fits great on this rail. Easy on, easy off. Get a little bit of wiggle, but you know that's not a problem because it's not going anywhere. Uh, works great. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it off for now. Uh, let's go ahead and jump up to the slide because there's really not much to see on the other side of the handgun. Uh, on the slide, you have just some rear serrations. They're not very deep, like they were on the STI, but they work, you know. And as it so happens, I really don't even need them to, to rack the slide. If I want to do a press check, I can grab from the front right here. My hands aren't sliding anymore, uh, so it's, it's easy to manipulate that slide. Really smooth, by the way. Dan Weston does a really great job with their handguns. Uh, I don't, they're not the top of the line premier 1911 manufacturer. You know, you got guys like Nighthawk and Agency, I, th I think, uh, Wilson Combat, of course, that are, you know, you're really your top dogs in 1911 manufacturers. But Dan Wesson is probably uh, right, just right behind them, really. I I'd put him ahead of SIG, at least me, um, and uh, some other brands. But really quality handgun from from Dan Wesson. Um, what else on the slide here? Sights. You have a two-dot system here. Both tritium vials, front and back. Square notch. And the rest of it is uh, black. Blacked out, serrated too. Really nice sights. They're starting to go dim on me. I'm not sure how long the last owner had this gun before I turned it in. But... I'm not worried about it. I, like I said, it's just a range gun for me, so I probably won't be needing night sights on it. There is uh, anti-glare serrations along the top here. It's kind of raised up from the slide a bit, 
and then it goes all the way from this rear sight to the front. And if you do a lot of outside shooting, that might be good for you. I don't, but uh, it's a nice look to it as well, so I can't complain. I'm starting to lose light here, so let me see if I can wrap things up. Uh, yeah, the front of the gun there, I'm not pointing it at myself, but just so you can see it, there it is. It is dirty because I just got back from the range today. And that's really all there is to talk about this handgun, guys. Let me get you some quick size comparisons with the STI. It's going to be longer. And the STI is probably going to be a little taller with that magazine there. Of course, it's double stacked, so it'll be thicker as well. Here is a full size USP. <clears throat> Again, standard size 1911 is going to be longer. And the USP is going to be a little shorter. All right, guys. So before it gets too dark, because I do like to use daylight in my videos, um, let me get you a quick close look at the gun. Uh, this is this is a good purchase, guys. If you're interested in an IT11 for the first time, you want to buy something that's not uh, uber expensive like a Wilson Combat, but you want quality, I think Dan Weston is a good place to start. I've had a lot of good experience with this handgun, and it's definitely uh, given me a great appreciation for the 1911 platform. So, again, guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or concerns, leave those down in the comments below.